So today, I'm playing with a 71 Ford F-250 Camper Special, two-wheel drive. It's got the spare toolbox on the side, which is kind of a rare option. And it has dual fuel tanks. Now, one of the really cool things about the Camper Special that Ford did was this rear bumper, in addition to a few other things. They were really, really good at saying, hey, we're gonna, you know, really do up these packages. So, say you have a camper that sticks out, you know, three, four feet behind the, the back of the cat, or behind the back of the bed, and, you know, you don't have anything back there to protect it, so if you get rear-ended, you're getting hit. And then it's also a pain in the ass, because then you have to put, like, a step out or whatever else. Well, what Ford did, was to accommodate these people. You see that clevis pin there? You see this setup underneath here? Another clevis pin over there if you can see it. So this setup is designed so that way this rear bumper will slide out to accommodate your camper. And then you look at this and everybody's got the little three ball hitch setup. But then you notice these guys are kind of small. What's going on there? Well, Ford also had an option that came with these trucks. You had a, it, it would hook onto these two and it would drop down and you had yourself a step. That way you could get up into your camper. How ingenious. Pretty nice option. Now this one has, of course, the dual tanks. I mean, most of these, if it was a camper special, they expected you're going to be out and going for a good long time. So they would give you a dual fuel tank setup and sometimes even a triple fuel tank setup. My father had one with a triple fuel tank setup. One on either side of the bed and then the one in the cab. Yeah, see it's a little torn up. So anyway, getting to what I'm doing. <clears throat> so he took it over to a shop. I'm not going to give the name of the shop. They rebuilt the carburetor, did a few other things to it, and it wouldn't idle right, wouldn't run put it in drive and it would just stall out and die. Most shops aren't used to working on carburetors anymore, so they'll do a little bit here, a little bit there. Don't really play with it. Well, they rebuilt the carb, but I don't know if they just don't have a vacuum gauge or what, but they didn't check it, and it was reading all over the place. There's a couple vacuum leaks. First off, the carburetor base was loose. Hmm, tighten that up, vacuum leak went away. Then, back over here on the side, this little manifold that you have, this back hose was loose. That one goes down to the transmission. Hmm, kind of odd, whatever. But then the, the truck, it would idle erratically. It was all over the place. So I went down and checked the timing on it. And lo and behold, they had it set at two degrees before top dead center. Now, my dad had one of these that had a 360 in it. His wasn't as nice as this, didn't have power brakes, didn't have the power steering and stuff like that. But it had a 360 in it and it was an automatic and did pretty much the same thing. Come to find out that these are supposed to be set at 6 degrees before top dead center. So the timing was off. Okay, reset the timing. Truck still wasn't running right. So then I checked the dwell. The dwell's supposed to be between, I think it's 25 and 32. And the, the dwell was way, way too tight. We were sitting at like 15. So I adjusted that out. Then after I did that, came back, and I adjusted the idle speed, a few other things, you know. It just, just the adjustment. People, I guess, don't know how to tune anymore. So now, we get in the truck. Been sitting for a second, so. Once. Just like that. <clears throat> and we can come up here. Now the RPM in drive is supposed to be 550. We're sitting just over six. Our vacuum, steady at about 19. I don't know if you can see it, I scratched it off, but there's a little black mark down there that comes around and hits the tip of that pointer. That's six degrees before top dead center. There's our dwell. So, dwell, eight cylinder, we're between, what's that? I'd say 
28 and 29, just over 28. So we're within our spec. Now, last thing that we need to check, RPM in drive. And yes, I got a little tire chalk down there. I also have the parking brake set. A little low, but it's bouncing right around 550. Vacuum at idle, in gear. Drops down a bit, but it's still all right. We're just outside of our range, but idle and park is perfect. So that's all it is. You just find the specs, make sure you have the tools and set everything to where they're supposed to be and keep fiddling with it until everything's perfect. And that's it, truck runs great.